thank you, son, for inviting me. I, I love to talk about uh, colors, and uh, I also love to wear them. So uh, it's going to be really uh, a fun talk for you know for me. Uh, as, as a designer, you know, while traveling around the world, I've always been inspired by the important role of uh, color in society. Uh, you know, society constructs color codes and values, establishes its uses, and determines whether it is acceptable or not. For example, the contrast between warm and cool colors is a matter of conventions and functions that can be different according to a period in time or societies. Like in the Middle Age, for instance, blue was a warm color. Uh, today, blue can be a cool color. Therefore, color is always a work in, uh, you know, in process. So, in an emotional uh, economy, which is, you know, the topic, uh, you know, today, color, you know, happened to be the most powerful way to, uh, you know, to humanize a brand. The study of color is essentially a multimedia and interdisciplinary field, uh, the history of words you know, related to colors greatly enriches our knowledge of the past and reminds us that in all cultures, colors' primary focus is to classify, mark, announce, connect, or divide, which is a concept that's so clearly important you know, in, uh, in working with brands today. So color is the most powerful way to connect with us emotionally. And how we do that uh, is something that I will demonstrate through you know, several examples that we've worked on, one of them being Coca-Cola, uh, that ask us to work on their, on their worldwide identity. So the first thing that we did was to address you know, the meaning of the Coca-Cola iconography and uh, find out very quickly that their dynamic ribbon, uh, that little swoosh, you know, that they, that they have was as well known, if not, you know, as, uh, uh, as powerful as a Nike, you know, swoosh. And we wanted to bring that back into the identity, particularly as we were working on the packaging. But we wanted to push the limit. And we wanted to push the limit with colors because we wanted also the brand to be more energetic and, uh, and, and more positive and more powerful. And so we brought a little bit of color yellow. Uh, and it was unprecedented you know, for Coca-Cola that had only used you know, two colors in their identities, white and red. The addition of this little color had an impact that really shows the power of color and how color is perceived you know, by uh, people. The first example of uh, an, an impact of that effort was that Vogue Australia, you know, six months after launch, had a model you know, on the cover of their magazine holding a Coca-Cola can and she was made up in yellow and red. And inside the magazine, uh, you could see four pages, you know, four fashion pages on the color, yellow and red. So suddenly, the color, you know, was connecting with uh, culture. And then, uh, six months later, on John Galliano's, you know, the designer, you know, for Dior, on Galliano's runway, three models with yellow and red dresses and made up in yellow and red had Coca-Cola cans, the new Coca-Cola cans in their hair, which meant that a little bit of color, you know, can stimulate even the most creative, you know, people around the world and impact, uh, you know, society, you know, as well. So what is the conclusion, you know, after this, uh, you know, this first, you know, demonstration the conclusion is, I believe that color defines, you know, brand personalities. And they define them, you know, better than anything else. Colors also expresses a brand's emotional character, and most importantly, they stimulate us. And they stimulate our emotion. 
So I'm going to stop for a second here, and uh, I'm going to ask you to do a little poll you know, for us and to answer that question, does color bring our big ideas to life? Is it always, sometimes, occasionally, never, or not sure? Okay, we will, re you know, we will uh, get back to you with the result uh, shortly, but I promise you that's probably going to be very interesting. So color helps communicate a brand's image. That's what we've seen in a very personal way. Brands need to be consumer-centric and the color can help us do that. We all know that we are moving from a mass market, you know, world where uniformity and commodity was the rule of the game, you know, to a world where we privilege uh, diversity, where we privilege, you know, the individual. And color has even a greater role, you know, in communicating on that, uh, on that basis. In the past, color was controlling. You know, most corporations or most, uh, you know, products were limiting themselves in their, you know, color statement. But now, color is stimulating, like as we've seen with Target, where they can use their colors in so many different ways that uh, allows, you know, people to understand and be stimulated by the brand, uh, you know, along the way and, and more often. But we also have seen that color now is more about contact than impact. If we look at how you know, uh, causes you know, have used color you know, to communicate their message, like you know, the pink ribbon you know, for breast cancer or the Lance Armstrong's you know, cancer effort with his yellow you know, bracelet, we realize that colors can have a meaningful you know, impact on us and uh, uh, on how we perceive you know, those brands. In the second part of the presentation, I'm going to take you through a little uh, trip around the world, and we're going to look at colors, uh, you know, in societies. You know, we're going to look at colors uh, as they define, you know, those societies. You know, we we're going to look at colors, uh, you know, as uh, you know, the type of uh, uh, insignia that gives meaning to society, but that also defines their codes and, uh, and value. So let's start with uh, pink, which is, you know, one of those colors that uh, has so many meanings, you know, that are different around the world. Uh, but pink, you know, most importantly, and that's the experience that I've, uh, I've had, addresses our senses. Sensitivity is the most important emotion. You know, associated, I'm sure we, you know, you'll agree with pink. Pink is the color of the skin, so it's connected with our sense of touch. But also, pink is about sweetness and fruitiness, so it is associated with our sense of taste. And then if we look at the, the smell of a rose, we know that pink also is related to our sense of smell. And so we can see that colors, you know, can, uh, you know, from a, uh, sensorial perspective, you know, can create a lot more emotions that maybe, you know, we think. The scale of uh, social attitudes toward pink, you know, run to extremes, you know, remarkably, you know, along, you know, gender's line, you know, where women tend, you know, to find pink, you know, quite interesting and empowering. But on the opposite side, you know, in Japan, pink is associated with sakura, the blooming of the cherry blossom, but also associated as a symbol of death, you know, with the young warriors, the samurai, you know, who dies in battle. 